Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. 2 Samuel chapter 19 Joab was told, The king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. And for the whole army, the victory that day was turned into mourning, because on that day the troops heard it said, The king is grieving for his son. The men stole into the city that day, as men steal in who are ashamed when they flee from battle. The king covered his face and cried aloud, O my son Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab went into the house to the king and said, Today you have humiliated all of your men who have just saved your life and the lives of your sons and daughters and the lives of your wives and concubines. You love those who hate you and hate those who love you. You've made it clear today that the commanders and their men mean nothing to you. I see that you would be pleased if Absalom were alive today and all of us were dead. Now go out and encourage your men. I swear by the Lord that if you don't go out, not a man will be left with you by nightfall. This will be worse for you than all of the calamities that have come on you from your youth until now. So the king got up and took his seat in the gateway. When the men were told the king is sitting in the gateway, they all came before him. Meanwhile, the Israelites had fled to their homes. Throughout the tribes of Israel, all of the people were arguing among themselves, saying, The king delivered us from the hand of our enemies. He is the one who rescued us from the hand of the Philistines, but now he has fled the country to escape from Absalom. And Absalom, whom we anointed to rule over us, has died in battle. So why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? King David sent this message to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Ask the elders of Judah, why should you be the last to bring the king back to his palace? since what is being said throughout Israel has reached the king at his quarters. You are my relatives, my own flesh and blood. So why should you be the last to bring the king? And say to Amasa, Are you not my own flesh and blood? May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if you're not the commander of my army for life in place of Joab. He went over the hearts of the men of Judah so that they were all of one mind, They sent word to the king, Return, you and all of your men. Then the king returned and went as far as the Jordan. Now the men of Judah had come to Gilgal to go out and meet the king and bring him across the Jordan. Shimei of Gera, the Benjamite from Bahurim, hurried down with the men of Judah to meet the king at the Jordan. With him were a thousand Benjamites, along with Zeba, the steward of Saul's household, and his fifteen sons and twenty servants. They rushed to the Jordan, where the king was. They crossed at the ford to take the king's household over and to do whatever he wished. When Shimei, son of Gera, crossed the Jordan, he fell prostrate before the king and said to him, May my lord not hold me guilty. Do not remember how your servant did wrong on the day my lord the king left Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind. For I, your servant, know that I have sinned. But today I've come here as the first from the tribes of Joseph to come down and meet my lord, the king. Then Abishai, son of Zeruiah, said, Shouldn't Shimei be put to death for this? He cursed the Lord's anointed. David replied, What does this have to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? What right do you have to interfere? Should anyone be put to death in Israel today? Don't I know that today I am king over Israel? So the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king promised him on oath. Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, also went down to meet the king. He had not taken care of his feet or trimmed his mustache or washed his clothes from the day that the king left until the day he returned safely. When he came from Jerusalem to meet the king, the king asked him, Why didn't you go with me, Mephibosheth? He said, My lord the king, since I, your servant, am lame, I said, I will have my donkey saddled and will ride on it, 
so I can go with the king. But Ziba, my servant, betrayed me, and he has slandered your servant to my lord the king. My lord the king is like an angel of God, so do whatever you wish. All of my grandfather's descendants deserved nothing but death from my lord the king. But you gave your servant a place among those who eat at your table. So what right do I have to make any more appeals to the king? The king said to him, Why say more? I order you and Ziba to divide the land. Mephibosheth said to the king, Let him take everything, now that my lord the king has returned home safely. Barzili the Gileadite also came down from Rogalim to cross the Jordan with the king and to send him on his way from there. Now Barzili was very old, 80 years of age. He had provided for the king during his stay in Mahanim, for he was a very wealthy man. The king said to Barzili, Cross over with me and stay with me in Jerusalem, and I will provide for you. But Barzili answered the king, How many more years will I live that I should go up to Jerusalem with the king? I am now 80 years old. Can I tell the difference between what is enjoyable and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats and drinks? Can I still hear the voices of male and female singers? Why should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant will cross over the Jordan with the king for a short distance. But why should the king reward me in this way? Let your servant return that I may die in my own town near the tomb of my father and mother. But here is your servant. Kimham. Let him cross over with my lord the king. Do for him whatever you wish. The king said, Kimham shall cross over with me, and I will do for him whatever you wish, and anything you desire from me, I will do for him. So all the people crossed the Jordan, and then the king crossed over. The king kissed Barzilli and bade him farewell, and Barzilli returned to his home. The king crossed over the Gilgal, and Kinham crossed with him. All the troops of Judah and half the troops of Israel had taken the king over. Soon, all the men of Israel were coming to the king and saying to him, Why did our brothers, the men of Judah, steal the king away and bring him and his household across the Jordan together with all of his men? All of the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, We did this because the king is closely related to us. Why are you so angry about it? Have we eaten any of the king's provision? Have we taken anything for ourselves? Then the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, We have ten shares in the king, so we have a greater claim on David than you have. Why then do you treat us with contempt? Weren't we the first to speak of bringing him back as our king? But the men of Judah pressed their claims even more forcefully than the men of Israel. Now, this chapter ends with David being uh, reestablished as the king over Israel. But it starts out with uh, Joab going and confronting the king because the king was still grieving over Absalom. He was uh, inconsolable. And being inconsolable, he had made all of the soldiers ashamed and their victory was turned to sadness because of the attitude of the king. So Joab confronted him, rebuked him. He told him that you hate those who love you, and you love those who hate you. Something wrong with you, David. And so he said, now go out and encourage your men, or I swear that not a man will be left for you by nightfall. And so the king responded. He got up, and he went and took his seat in the gateway and started thanking everybody, I'm sure, and expressing his appreciation and letting himself be seen and uh, stopped his heavy mourning for Absalom, at least publicly. And then the king sent messengers throughout Israel, getting um, the other tribes to receive him back. And so the messengers went out with the word that David wanted reconciliation with everybody. He didn't want to carry the, the war forward. And he offered to make Amasa, who had been the captain of the armies of Absalom, his captain in place of Joab. So that was the plan, you know, return and... and uh, And let's all settle down and call a peace treaty. Meanwhile, Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, who had stayed behind, you may recall uh, Mephibosheth had been given all the lands of Saul and all the inheritance of Saul and Jonathan. He was um, Jonathan's son. 
Well, his servant, Ziba, went out with David when David left Jerusalem. And David said to Ziba at that time, where's Mephibosheth? And Ziba's story was that Mephibosheth was hoping they would restore uh, Saul's throne and give it to him. And so Ziba went with David. Mephibosheth stayed behind. Well, here comes Mephibosheth saying, you know, David, I'm your man. I love you. I'm so sorry that I didn't go with you. But it was all Ziba's fault. And so David didn't actually say, I don't believe you, Mephibosheth. But he said, why should I say any more? I order you and Ziba to divide the land. So we're kind of left with the opinion that David didn't really believe the guy. And then once again, David is accepted as king by all 12 tribes. That's where we end this chapter. But Lord, there's a lot um, lot going on here. David's grief over his son was genuine. It was deep. It was heartfelt. David had a lot of regrets um, that affected him and his grief affected others. Lord, we recognize that in times of sadness, we're not at our best. And Lord, for any of those that are grieving today, we pray for comfort, Lord, that people would take time to grieve. But as the Bible says, not as those who have no hope, but Lord, we're believers. We have our hope in you. We find our comfort in you. We ask you now, God of all comfort, to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.